Hello, is there anyone there? If there's anyone there, post a comment, please. As I have no idea what I'm doing. Hello. Can anyone hear me? Write a comment just to say hi. Hi Mum, hi Bev. Say hello, please. Oh, Maria can hear me, fab. All this newfangled technology, eh? I don't know. <clears throat> So this is one of Molly Harrison's stamps and I'm going to be doing some colouring today. Thank you all for joining us. Anyone that doesn't know me, my name's Gavin and we've got a craft shop in South Wales called Valley Craft. And hopefully I've pinned a link to all the products that I'm going to be using today so you can have a look on the website hello Bev how are you hi Pete hello Deborah
nice. So if anyone hasn't seen Molly Harrison stamps before, they are beautiful. <clears throat> so the one I'm going to be colouring today is called Lily of Love, which is this one. Really nice image. Um, and there's some other ones that they sell as well. <clears throat> I've, I've got most of them. I think there's only one I haven't got. This is an, another one that they do, which is called Hearts. It's another lovely one. And we've got Sea of Bubbles. And anyone that's been into the shop has probably seen that I've already coloured this one using Phil Martin's watercolour brush pens, which are amazing. <clears throat> Poppies of Amethyst. I think this one is out of stock, unfortunately. I sent my mum this one for Mothering Sunday. The, these stamps, they're amazing value. They're all $9.99. $9.99! And they're a decent size. Really good size. And you get all sorts of different embellishments with it as well. Little butterflies and sentiments and all sorts of things like that. Lovely. So this one is a summer day. Also got Fairy Tale of Dreams, which is another fab one. The hair on this looks amazing. Yeah, Peter's a big fan of the Molly Harrison stamps. He's got a few of them. I'm just waiting for him to send me lots of photos of ones that he's coloured in. Hi, Paula. And then this one is called Martyr's Garden. Which is another nice one. Very cute images. Hello Ian, how am I doing? <coughs> how is everyone anyway? Let me know how you are, how you're feeling, if you're all staying inside. Keeping safe. <clears throat> and if you can like and share this Facebook Live as well, that would be brilliant. Um, obviously, the more people we can get to, to look at these videos, the more videos we can do. <clears throat> so I haven't quite finished colouring this image yet. Um, I think I've done most things. The only thing I haven't done is the wings. But what I'm going to do with the wings, not today, but what I will do is um, use some parchment paper and then I'm going to stamp the wings in probably a twinkling embossing powder and then cut them out and then actually give like a three dimensional sort of effect, which is going to be lovely. But today I'm going to start from scratch. So. The paper I use is our super smooth paper and this is 250 gram. Really nice stuff. It is um, on the website. In the, if you click on the link that I've pinned, it will take you to the website. And we do a pack of 25 sheets of 250 gram for £5.50. If anyone is interested. <coughs> So one thing I always do whenever I'm using alcohol pens is I put a piece of scrap paper or card underneath because as you'll see when you're colouring the colour does actually, the pens do actually start coming through the back which they are supposed to do. <coughs> That's how they manage to blend so beautifully. 
And obviously I don't want to get my lovely plastic table messy. So, um, so that's why I'm using a piece of card. And then I'm going to use my stamping platform. This one is the Press to Impress. Unfortunately, we haven't got any stock at the moment <coughs> because of this blooming virus. Um, China closed down for a while, so there's been a bit of a bit of a delay. Glad to hear people are staying in and looking after themselves. Perfect crafting time. So these stamps, these clear stamps, they always come on a an acetate sheet. And then all you need to do is just pull them off. They're pretty durable, so you don't need to worry too much. <clears throat> and they always print the design, the line art of the design on, on the sheet as well. So that can be quite handy sometimes if you need to know what, what size you need something to be. I shall, I'll do it this way, I think. So, pop my card in there. And then, when you put your stamp on a stamping platform, remember to put it this is the raised side, so the side that's actually got the, the line art on it. So that side needs to go down onto your piece of card. And then you can stick it wherever you want. So I shall put it there. <clears throat> so this, is, this part is the back of the stamp. So then I bring my platform lid down, push it on. Lift it back up again and it's stuck to the back of the lid now. Now, with regard to inks, because I am using alcohol pens, the rule of thumb is basically opposites. <clears throat> so if you're using alcohol pens, you can't use an alcohol-based ink. So you can use any dye-based ink. This is a Memories dye-based ink pad. Um, you can use Versafine. The only thing with Versafine, it's an oil, this is oil-based, so it's not alcohol-based. So you can use it with your pens. The only thing is, because it takes a little longer to dry, you'll probably have to leave it to dry for a bit before you start colouring or use, um, use a heat tool or the wafting technique. And then the other one is my favourite, which is from Spectrum Noir. It's the Finesse Alcohol Proof dye-based ink. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. So this one you can use with alcohol pens. So it makes it really simple to understand. So I'm going to give this one a go. Sorry for the wobbly table. Hi Lorraine, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Oh, don't zoom in Peter. Although at least you can't see my face, which is something. Right, so, like that. I'm gonna bring that down. And then just gently push all over and it's always a good idea to sort of just leave the ink to sort of absorb into the card just a little bit but obviously with a stamping platform it's not the end of the world if it doesn't stamp very well just stick another layer on there 
I think this ink pad is probably a little bit old now, so that's probably Ian doing all of his stamping. So bring that over again, give it another push. the beauty of the stamping platforms is you can get as strong an image as you like. So take that off my stamping platform. And you can see that's a really nice crisp image. So I'll just give that my stamp a quick wipe. Otherwise Ian will kill me. And then I'll leave that side and then give it a proper clean bit later. Mm -hmm. Hi Helen, how are you? Hi Dania. Uh, not too much ink on my fingers, that's good. So, bring this back in, make sure everyone can see it, yeah, just about. <coughs> right, so um, what I tend to do with colours, as you'll probably see from this one, at the bottom I've got little, little samples. So what I tend to do, especially with the tri-blend pens, because I'm going to be using the tri-blend pens today, try saying that quickly. Um, these pens are fab, because as you'll see, if they were positioned properly, you've got three pens in one. So there's a light colour, you've got the middle colour, and then you've got your dark colour. So, and I think they are £3.50 for a pen. Let me just check. Do -ba -do -ba -do. Yeah, £3.50. Um, which is pretty good for three colours in one pen. And the good thing about these is the fact that you don't need to think, oh, now, which colour do I need? If I have a light yellow, what colour do I need to go with that? You just pick up one pen and you know you've got your light, your middle and your dark. Hi Jenny, how are you? The lovely Jenny. <clears throat> so what, whenever I colour with alcohol pens, I tend to go from light, I start with the light first of all and lay that colour down and then go to my dark and then to my middle and then back to my light. So it's always, it always tends to be a three um, colour blend. So the first thing I'm going to do down the bottom is just check that these colours are 
the ones that I want, and no, they're not. I want... Which one do I want? Citrus green? Yes, citrus green. <clears throat> and colouring is the sort of thing, it's so therapeutic and it's the sort of thing that you can just drift away and just enjoy doing. So I'm going to start on one of the leaves, if you can call it a leaf, first of all. And then all I'm going to do, because it is dry, isn't it? Yeah. All I'm going to do is just put a light. This is the light CG1. This is from the pen, is the citrus green blend, if anyone is interested. And then all I'm going to do is just colour the whole of the leaf. Now these pens have only got one nib, but to be honest, they're pretty good. They're pretty fine anyway. <clears throat> so then I'm going to go into my dark. And put a little bit at the tip. And then this line here is where I usually tend to sort of follow the shading as well. And then I'll go in with my middle tone. And then with the middle tone, I tend to just touch the dark bit and then just work my way down a little bit more. And then the same with this bit down here, just work around a little bit. The secret with alcohol pens is always to work on a smaller area because it's going to be wetter because it's the alcohol that does the blending. What's everyone think of my music? It's a royalty-free music playlist. So we don't get chucked off. So if you can see that you've got a bit of a bit of dimension there. Let's do another leaf. <clears throat> one thing you might need to do with, with some of these stamps, if you notice, like this one here, what I did on on this version was I actually because I, I think it's obviously because of the, the limitations of the size of the stamp. The image has got to end somewhere. So all I did was I just got a fine liner pen and just filled in the extra bit there. And then also on this side as well, where that doesn't quite join. So I just filled it in just to join it. Magic! Peter, you need to turn your hearing aid up a bit. Uh, so, if I do a couple of these little leaves over here. So, starting with the light. The other thing you can do as well, if you want extra dimension, is you can leave white spaces when you're putting your light colour on, first of all. So if you want an area to be really light, then you start with your, your lightest colour and leave a, a space. Go in with the dark. So that area is going to be dark anyway. Go 
going with mid. And then you can just extend it down a bit. And then when you go back in with the light, go over the whole thing and then you end up with a, a lighter area in the middle then. So it's, it comes out much lighter than if it had two coats of the colour. Just going to go into my own little world now. And the other thing to remember as well is if you do end up going out the lines at all, it's not the end of the world. There are a couple of tricks that you can use to, to cover that up later. So what's everyone doing today? Anything exciting? And the other thing you can do as well, if you decide after you've done that, you leave it to, to dry for a couple of minutes, and then if you decide, oh, actually, it's not quite dark enough, you can go back over a, another one of the areas and put a bit more dimension in. <laughs> Dania's resting her knee, oh bless. Dania is a bit accident prone for anyone that know, doesn't know her. And she fell down her makeshift steps the other day. But she didn't take a selfie, you know. These pens smell lovely as well. There we are, so that's... Still needs to dry a little bit. It will dry a little bit paler, but it does give it a bit more dimension. Uh, so let me just do this, the stem of this leaf now, this flower. I know a lot of people struggle with where to put the, the dark, the shadows and the highlights in colouring. And I do as well. Sometimes it's like, oh, what do I do? But when you're colouring something like this from nature, the best thing is to just look at nature, look at a flower and see where the shade shadows are when the, where the light parts are it's like on this you've got the flower head so obviously the flower is going to be casting shadow on the stem so this part of the stem is going to be darker because the petals are casting a shadow
so easy to blend with these pens as long as you make sure that you're working on wet ink and they blend really lovely and if you look on the back you'll see that the color is started to come through which is a good sign Should we try something different? Should we try, should we try a dress? Uh, I went with a nice soft pink last time. Should I do something a bit different for this one? What do you think? Um, what about purple? Let's have a look at the purple blend. See what that comes out like. Oh, that's quite nice. Ooh, it's quite strong as well. Those three colours there. I think I'll go for those. We start at the bottom part of the dress first of all, and I'm just gonna. This is the light colour. Wow. And there's quite a lot of pleats and things like that in this dress, so. But it's easy enough to follow because you've got the you just have to imagine the shading is all in the in the pleats I think that's the last pleat there <clears throat> so then in with the dark so I'm just gonna start at the top with the dark, because that's like her belt there, so it's going to be a bit darker, be a little bit of shading there. And then there'll also be some shading in the pleats. Of course, you don't have to use three colours if you think, oh, actually, I'd, I'd prefer a stronger definition between the two, between the, the three colours. Then you can just use two colours if you wanted. It's not the end of the world if you get it wrong. Isn't it typical? Lovely sunny day again. As soon as the schools break up, the sun comes out. So this, I'm just going over with the light colour now. to help all the different shades to blend in with each other. Do 
Can we turn the music up, Ian? If you can't hear it. I didn't want to drown out my lovely voice. Oh, so can you all see the the lovely blending on the on the dress there on the bottom of the dress? What do we think so far? Everyone enjoying it? So I'm just going to work on the upper part of her dress now. Thank you, Jenny. We do like happy people. There we are. Oh, and mustn't forget the front of her dress as well. Thanks, Bev. Glad you're enjoying it. So, the back of her dress is going to be a little bit darker, obviously, because there's a bit of shadow there. And then down where the pleats are. Just a, a hint of a shadow there. And then under her arm, this part, there's going to be a shadow as well. And then I'll probably put a sh bit of shadow on the front of her dress as well. Just a little bit. For extra dimension. So what do people prefer using for colouring? Do they like alcohol pens, watercolour pens, acrylics, pastels? What's your favourite? I'm torn between alcohol pens and watercolour pens. Watercolouring, some, it's very subtle, but sometimes it can be a bit too subtle for me. Alcohol pens and watercolours, Jenny. Yep. I agree with you there. There we are. So I'm going to give that a little bit more blending. Oh, this song is for Deborah and Dania. They love they like all the heavy sort of stuff. Not really my thing, but there we are, each to their own. Yeah, 
now. So if you can see that, that's the dress. Not looking too bad. And then there's a little bit of a, she's got a belt and there's a bit of trim. So I think I might go with the pink. So I've got bright pink. So let's give this a scribble. Ooh, mm, I don't know if that's too bright actually. That's the thing, sometimes when you put it on paper, it's quite deceptive. Let's try the hydrangea. Oh no, I don't like that. Oh, actually. Indecisive or what? this one of course if you try something and then you think hang on a minute no that doesn't work you can always leave it to dry and then go over the top with another color later Ooh, and I got my hearts as well. What colour should I colour my hearts in? <gasps> decisions, decisions. Oh, Peter, now you're showing off. <laughs> Hi, Maddie, how are you? So I'm just going to go in with the dark, just a little bit of shading. It's not really very much to, to colour in here. So I might just do a little bit there. Just to warm it up a bit. And I quite like the definition between the two different colours actually. Two different shades there. Mm, oh, I'll go along there as well, I think. Not too bad. <laughs> I'm very well, thank you, Maddie. Enjoying being off college for the moo. Um, and then what colour? I think I'm, I'm leaning towards a blue for the hearts. Don't ask me why. Mm. I think I'll probably just go in with one colour. Maybe the, the mid colour for that. Hi Lorraine. Did you get spoiled on Mother's Day? Oh yeah, I like that blue. That's nice. Don't 
no reason why you can't have blue hearts, is there? And while I'm here, I might as well colour in these other hearts as well. Pretty. It's like a tattoo on there, isn't it? Right, so shall I do I think I'll try the skin now. So that's where we're to at the moment. Pretty. Yes, Maddie, there was a heart, and I think it was probably a, a nice heart tattoo. Either that or it's just floating across the page, you never know. Um, so, skin with tribe lens is simple. I shall go for the, if you can't read it, because it's probably back to front, fair skin blend, this is. So, it's got the light, the mid, and the dark, but it's a nice, if you look at the... The original one that I did is quite a nice, soft skin tone, but it's not too pale. It doesn't look anemic. Two by the wings. Two by the wings. Oh, yes. Two by the wings. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. I think that's all of them. I know there's some on the butterfly, but I'll probably do that later. Ah, oh, bonjour, Auntie Enid. Ça va? That's about the extent of my French at the moment. <clears throat> so, if I start on the arm, I'm going to do this part, the, the upper body and then the neck as well. This is just going in with the light colour. So much detail in these stamps, you can just spend hours looking at them. And then you probably still miss something like I did. Really easy to colour in, there's no streaks because they're alcohol pens. You don't get any lines like you do in um, with felt tip pens. It just blends flawlessly, it's fab. So that's the light, then I'm going to go in with the dark colour. So obviously under a chin there's going to be shadow and then under her arm a bit of shadow there and then around her hairline there this will all be in shade Probably a little bit on this side as well, 
just to give her some extra dimension. Because obviously her arms are round, so she needs a bit of shadow on both sides. the mid color so just going up to the the dark shade and just extending it a little bit going in small circular motions on this because it gives a, a lighter finish then it's not so defined uh, so then down here color and then just go over all the areas that I've colored in previously but nice and subtle just got a bit of dimension you can see that she's not a flat image now although her face looks a bit pale there doesn't it color again Huge eyes she's got. I don't know if any of you know about Facebook Live. This I haven't really done it very much. But um, after the recording's over, if you did want to go back in and, and watch it again, um, I think you have to leave it for a little, for a, I don't know, a couple of minutes or something, and then Facebook actually saves it. Um, so you can go back in again later on if you wanted to to watch it back, if you're so inclined. So then just a bit of shadow along the hairline again. And then there'll be shadow at the bottom of her face. And probably around 
surrounded by a nose as well, a little bit of shadow. And then on the right hand side as well. Don't want to give her too much shadow underneath her eyes, but I don't want her to look tired. No. So that was the dark, then back in with the mid. So again, just touching the, the darkest part with the mid tone. Just coming in just a smidge more. smidge more on the nose. Like that. And then back in with the lightest colour again. Just to fill it all in and make it all blend nicely. She'll just stick a, a little smidge under her nose. Maybe a bit stronger. Looking pretty nice. <clears throat> and I need to give her uh, some blushing cheeks. So I'm probably going with the the pale pink. The pale pink pen. Um and let's go in with the the mid. So with the cheeks, I tend to sort of do a bit of a sort of a triangle sort of. So when you think the where the cheekbones are, it just sort of comes down. And you don't want to sort of put on too much colour because you don't want it to be too heavy. So I tend to just do just little delicate taps. Just to fill her cheeks in with a bit of blusher. And then in with the light, just to blend that colour out a bit. So she has cheeks now. <coughs> and then I'm going to 
gonna give her blue eyes. Just some nice pale blue under eyes. With the eyes I'm not gonna fill it all in and I'm not gonna go too strong because it's because it's the eyes so I'm just gonna put a little bit of the darker color in this is the mid tone actually well wow, thank you Jenny It's the pens that do the work though. As long as you've got the right pens and the right card, <clears throat> that is the secret definitely. And then uh, I should probably just just go in a tinsy bit with the fair skin blend on the eyes just to sort of break up the the white. You don't want it to just be too stark. Uh, give it some lippy. Ooh, a nice strong pink lipstick, do you think? <clears throat> um, start with the light. It's not particularly light. So has everyone shared, <coughs> shared this post for me? Share away to all your friends, family, any crafting groups that you are members of, you can do, do that as well. <coughs> uh, right, so then with our hair, I'll probably go with the same sort of colours as I did last time, if I can remember them. I think it was the <coughs> the Earth Brown blend pen is the one I used last time. So let me just check that. Ooh, I think that's running out, isn't it? Is that the one I used, or did I use another one? Maybe I used too much last time. That's the one I used. Hmm. <coughs> Should be all right. All right, so with hair, um, again, it's a case of going in with the palest color. And like we did with the leaves, if you wanted um, a much lighter or stronger definition like I did on this one leave a, a white space first of all so I should do that so if we start at the top of the hair the head let's get some color on And if you sort of think of the hair as how hair is, and then you colour it in the same sort of way, so rather than just scribbling it on, if you actually do the, the motion, the sort of flicking motions. Then 
then that will give you more of a, a true effect. Because obviously hair isn't just solid, one solid colour. So, it's a nice white bit in the middle there. And then in with the dark. So the dark colour, the very end there. Small movement, small motions around the flower. Excellent. And in with the mid tone, and then just flick a little bit further out. in with the light and then this is where you can actually fill in if my pen works and fill in the lighter areas and then it will just help to blend all of the colors into each other go in and get a bit more dimension so back in with the dark just helps to give it a bit more of a stronger dimension in with the dark again just to blend all those shades in well what do you think of that then bit of dimension going on there with the hair and then obviously you can just carry on doing exactly the same technique Even though these aren't the finest pens, you can still get into all the really fine parts really easily.
just leave some little areas. Hi, Rhiannis. So then just going with a darker colour, just for some extra dimension, put it in there, Tone just to help to blend the dark a bit in. Oh, you know, spring's coming when people start cutting the grass. I think it's our next door neighbours because it's certainly not us. light colour. I do some more hair? Do you want me to do the rest of the hair or do you want me to do the flower? What do you think? Give me some love, peeps. Good grief. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? Right, I'll do the petals on the flower and then I'll do the butterfly. So the petals on the flower, I'm gonna go Great minds think alike. I'm going for the flower. Hi Gaina, how are you? So, this is the Hydrangea blend. So I'm just going in with the light colour ooh and I, if I do the the hearts in blue that'll be quite nice I think with this colour as well
don't know what sort of flower this is. Anyone know the name of it? Is it a real flower or is it just a fantasy flower? Maybe it's like a, looks a bit like a lily or something like that. <clears throat> it's obviously not real, otherwise it would be dead. Because I'm not very good at looking after plants. Although Ian did buy me some lovely tulips the other day. I love tulips, my favourite flower. So that's the tips and the underside of the petals, but then I also need to do the center of the flower as well, because that's going to be, because it's coming out the middle, it's going to have a bit of shading on that as well. Oh, tulips and daffodils, Jenny. Yep. Oops, sorry. Tulips, daffodils, gerberas. I love gerberas as well. Yeah, so the underside of the petals, if you can see those, they're going to be a bit more in shade and then the tips of the petals are also going to be in shade uh, in shade a little bit mm, I do like this colour it's nice These pens just blend so easily. Don't have to do much work at all. So then back in with the palest shade, the light. Oh, Lorraine, you'll have to give me some tips on how not to kill a plant. Although I'm not particularly green-fingered, I, I don't tend to water plants. That's my problem, I think. Which could be why they all die. So just a little bit more of the dark colour in the centre, just to give it a bit more dimension. to blend it in a bit. And I think that'll do. Cheeky. Um. <laughs> there we are. 
now, so that's me. It's my flower. All the petals of my flower. Whatever flower it is. <clears throat> and then my stems. These little hearts, I'm going to go in with the. Which one is this? True Blue Blend. To match the colour of my other hearts. This is the dark shade. And then because these are quite small, I'm not going to go back in with the mid, I'll just go straight back to the, the lightest colour and blend that dark shade in a bit more. Because there's not really enough room to do the mid as well. Flower. Right, so I'm just gonna go in and do my butterfly now, and then I shall show you what I do um, if there's any little cock ups around the edges. go with the purple blend I think which is a colour I think I used for her dress. Let me just double check. Is that the colour I used? Yes, I think that was the colour I used for her dress, wasn't it? And do the Fletcher Bay. So start with the light, lightest colour again. You know, it's easy when you know how, isn't it? Concentrate on the these wings first of all. And then go in with the dark just in the middle.
Oh dear, Peter. <laughs> They're not crayons, darling. <laughs> They're alcohol pens. So that's the mid tone, and then back in with the light. Uh, Peter's asking a question about the tri blend pens. I don't think these are refillable because they've only got the one nib. They, I think on with the um, the other pens, the, the normal Spectrum Noir colouring pens and the illustrators, I think with those ones, if they run out, you can refill those because they've got the, um, the chisel nib. But I don't think you can with the tri-blends. I could be wrong, and if anyone knows, let me know. Do you know Ian? I don't really want to try taking the nib out, just in case I get messy. I was asking you, Ian, I was asking you about um, whether the tri-blend pens are refillable, because Peter's asking. Do you know? dark back in with the light the mid just to blend that in so is anyone else as devastated as me about Eurovision being cancelled this year I love Eurovision. It's the worst news ever. So I think I'll go with the blue again for the hearts on my butterfly. reason I make it look easy Peter is because it is easy. If I can do it anyone can do it. Uh, 
and the tried lem pens just make it so much easier because you don't even have to think about it because you've got the pen in your hand and you just know that as long as you make sure that you keep the pens in the right place in the right order you know that you've got your light your mid and your dark tone symbols as they say Again, because this is quite small, I've just gone in with dark, so then I'm just going to go straight back in with the, the lightest colour just to blend that a little bit. That's the thing, you don't always have to go with the three colour blend, you can go two if you want. And then, should I give him a blue body as well? Yes, I think he'll have a blue body. He's not a real butterfly, so he can be whatever colour I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Ian doesn't think that they're refillable either. <clears throat> but they're such good value for money. I think if you know three pound fifty for a professional alcohol pen is is pretty good. And they are going to last a long time anyway. Oh, no, so there's my butterfly, my beautiful butterfly. Nice and pretty. Needs a bit of bling, I think, as well. <clears throat> right, so I'm not going to carry on colouring the rest of it at the moment because it's just gone half past twelve and you're probably getting bored of me now, so... I'm just going to show you quickly on this one that I did before. Dun, dun, dun. Good point, Ian. If one of your colours runs out, it's obviously a pen that you use a lot, a colour that you use a lot of, so then all you need to do is just buy the same colour in the illustrator pens which we sell in the shop and we do the individual colours so you can just buy the one colour pen that you want and then you can use that so with um, with the outline uh, it doesn't look as though I've actually got any little hickey bits around the edges on this but if I did, if I show you on uh, another area. Where's my green gone? There it is. So if I show you on another area, if, if I happen to just go out a little bit. Then what you can do is you can use a blender pen 
This is the Spectrum Noir Illustrator blender pen. So with the Illustrator pens, they've got two nibs. So they've got the the fine, what they call that, a bullet nib on the one end, which is the same nib as you get in the Spectrum in the Tri-Blend pens. And then on the other end of the pen, they've got a brush nib, which is gorgeous. And I think they're slowly, Crofter's Companion are slowly replacing these nibs with um, an even better quality Japanese nib. So these ones are fab, but um, but they are bringing out, they are slowly replacing the older nibs with the new ones as well. So if you have got any areas that you just go out, so for example, if, you know, if in one of the leaves I'd gone, gone out just a little bit and you wanna just cover that up, all you need to do is use your blender pen. Your blender pen, they call it a blender pen, but it's basically just pure alcohol in a pen. And then all you need to do is just apply it to the area. And then what it does is it floods the area with alcohol and actually pushes the color through the card. So at the moment it's, where are you, there you are. You can see that it's still wet. But when you look on the back, you can see that the green has been pushed through to the back of the card. So when that dries, you might need to do it again. So you leave it a few, for a few minutes to dry and then you can go in maybe with another application and then it should push all of the gr all of the color through to the back of the card I can't see there we are and um, and then it should cover up any mistakes that you've got and then the other thing that you can do as well which I, I tend to like doing quite a lot I think it just gives it a nice finish um, is to actually give your project a, a pale outline, a pale brown, out, uh, grey outline. So, um, do, 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 I think the only one I've got... Ice grey and I've got brown grey. Let me have a look, see which one I want to use. Ooh, which one do I go for? I'm going to go for the brown grey, I think. No, I'm not going to go for the ice grey. So then all you need to do with the ice grey, I'm just going to go with the lightest lightest shade of the ice grey. And then I'm just going to go all the way around the edge of everything I've coloured. And this does two things. Firstly, it defines your colouring and gives it a nice finish but it also means that if there are any areas I have actually gone out a little bit there when you go over those areas it it covers them up with the with the pale grey So I don't know if you can see that, but it just gives it a nice finish. And then what I would do is I would go all the way around the 
all of the design. I don't know if I'd bother doing the, the hearts because they're a little bit small. It just gives it a nice shadowy finish. Anyone got any questions or anything they wanted to ask? Anything they're not sure about? How do you think it's gone? Is there anything I could do better? Anything you don't understand? Anything that doesn't work? So I've tried to put the link to the website so that you can see all the products that I've used. So hopefully that's worked all right. this little bit here any requests anything you want to see demoed there we are so you can see that it just gives it a nice, nice edge, a nice soft edge around the image. You don't have to do it, but I, I think it looks really nice. Don't even know if you can see it properly. But once I've finished colouring it in completely, and once I've done the wings with the, with the parchment effect that I'm planning on doing, I'll take it into the shop. I'll put a photo on Facebook as well, and if anyone wants to come in and see it, <clears throat> as long as you leave me two, two metres distance, then um, feel free. Yeah, so that's the one I've been working on today. At the bottom. And then that's the one that I've worked on previously. Thank you for the loves. Send me lots of loves and likes. <clears throat> so I think that's about it for today. So I hope you all enjoyed that. It went pretty well, I thought. Um, I'm hoping to do another live maybe on Wednesday. Um, I was thinking about it. Probably won't be a, a really long one, but I was thinking about showing you um, Diamond Dots. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of Diamond Dots. But this is one of the kits. This is what I actually had for my birthday from Ian. Ooh, look at that. 
Isn't it stunning? So I'm going to be doing a bit of diamond dots on Wednesday if I can. Showing you how to do that. Some uh, Another really nice craft. Very mindful. Very easy to do. And you don't have to think about it. Which is good. And um, while you're stuck indoors. Self-isolating or whatever you're doing. That should be good. Um, we're also going to be doing Facebook Lives on Friday and Saturday. Uh, because we have had to cancel the... Um, Cricket Joy demo days um, this weekend we're going to be doing Facebook lives on Friday and Saturday not sure what time yet but um, it'll be on Facebook so um, check it out thank you Layla nice to see you thanks Bev Okie dokie, thank you very much everyone, and um, enjoy the rest of your day, keep safe, make sure you keep two metres distance from any strange people, and um, oh, apparently 10 to 1 on both days, Ian said we're going to be doing the demos, the Facebook Lives on Friday and Saturday, so that should be interesting. And the machine is cute. It's the Cricut Joy um, electronic cutting machine. And it is the cutest machine ever. You're welcome, Ginny. Thanks, Lorraine. Take care, everyone. And we shall see you soon. Bye, then.